Hey everybody, we're live. I'm going to go over to the ABC News Channel 7 is supposed to have a feed. I, Lauren had said he has a live stream, but I went to his Facebook pages, both campaign and personal, and didn't see an active live stream. So Channel 7 is supposed to have one. They're saying we'll be right back. So as soon as, in fact, you know what? I'll do it right now. I will adjust this uh, <laughs> peanut butter hero. Did they throw some votes out in the mountains in Cali? Um, not precisely, but um, it wouldn't surprise me the way this is election has gone. One moment, please. Um, okay, here we go. Let me go back to make sure that... Uh, ABC7, on a second. And forward finding solutions. This is ABC7 News. Okay. Now at six, the man who may have saved dozens in the Colorado nightclub shooting is speaking for the first time. Why he says he's no hero. The health alert for us all ahead of the holidays. Hospital beds are filling up as cases of the flu, RSV, and COVID rise. The recommendations from local officials to stay healthy. Plus, Oakland's own Amy Schneider adding another Jeopardy record to her ledger, waking up as a winner of the Tournament of Champions. She seems so delighted, right? and we are happy for her. <laughs> right? Me too. Because you would think at this point, she's, she's such a winner. Yeah, that she'd be like... No big deal, but she genuinely yes. seems touched by it. I like that. That's got nothing to do with what we're looking for. So while they're chattering, I'll keep that page up. And because his press conference is supposed to start right now and um, right now. So I'm going to keep that there in case they shift over. But I'm going to go back over to Facebook and see if I can find his press conference. that was supposed to be on Facebook, according to the text that he sent me. So um, let's see here what's going on. I'll go with that that way. Uh, and see if it's on his mayoral page site there. Featured. He's got a recap video. No live streams, videos, no live stream. Wait a minute. No, that's his commercial. Okay. Um, hmm. Let me see his personal. And I don't see it there. Let's see if it's someplace else. Nope. Not there either. So let me see something here. Let me go back to... They're still talking about something. Uh, this is all a mess. These folks need to get their communication. They need to hire Zenny 62 Media <laughs> to do their communications better because they should have a page set up for this or they're going to do it on Facebook. I did it on YouTube myself. Mm, let's see if it's on Twitter. Uh, back here. Go over to Twitter. Open this up. Because they're talking about one thing. Okay. Um, all right, I don't see anything there at all, and let's see here, don't see, I don't see it here. Uh, I don't know what he's waiting for. He's clearly waiting for something. It's not up. Uh, let me text them here. Uh, all right. Uh, no Facebook 
video live up on your pages. Okay. All right, here we go. Now we've got it. All right. So this is them. Let's go over here. To someone who has had a deep commitment for not just Oakland, but has served this district um, and, and made some indelible contributions. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren. Thank you. First of all, uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming out today. Um, I am overwhelmed. What, uh, what's really special about this right here to me and why I'm emotional right now is I think it's always been clear that Oakland, its future, its people, is deeply personal to me. And this is why. The support, the way that we show up for each other, our commitment to serving and delivering for all Oaklanders, that is what we have been fighting for. That is what we are committed to delivering beyond an election cycle, but for generations to come. Good morning. Welcome to District 6. Welcome to Liberation Park. So when I first came into office, this parcel of land that we stand on right here, it was a vacant, blighted lot growing weeds waist high, collecting litter. It was We received, I don't know how many phone calls, emails, about the blight that existed here and how we needed to have some sort of transformation, some sort of rejuvenation for our district, for our city, for East Oakland. And look at it now. This is evidence of what community can do when we come together, not just with an idea, but with the commitment and the consistent approach in delivering this place here. It is a place where kids come to play, where businesses are incubated, where people are healed, where neighbors are nourished, where unbounded possibilities are realized. It was important for me that we have this conversation right here because of what Liberation Park represents. And just like the movement and the effort that we have been under for the past 14 months, this lot, this park, it will continue. This is just the beginning. The place where we are standing right now, this is where we will have the Black Cultural Zone Market Hall and residences. The, the impact that we created over the past four years in deep partnership with community through Liberation Park, it will be sustained for generations to come. And that's what we are focused on. That's what we are building. So when we officially kicked off this campaign 14 months ago, I did emphasize how Oakland, Oakland, its residents, its future are deeply personal to me. With my roots growing three generations deep and firsthand knowledge of many of Oakland neighborhoods, we had a commitment on how we could transform lives, how we could deliver on the promises and the potential of this town. I could not simply stand by as a kid from Oakland and watch as my town went a direction that I knew we shouldn't be going, knowing that I had the potential and the community support to create the change that we needed and make sure that we deliver. That's what compelled me to forego a career in corporate America and become a council member for District 6. That's what compelled me to forego my safe seat on the city council and step up to serve my town, my city, 
as its next mayor. We began this journey with the hope and the expectation that our vision of delivering an Oakland for all Oaklanders would prevail at the ballot box. And we sought to ensure that our vision of Oakland was embodied through our campaign. This vision for transforming Oakland, emphasizing how we tap into our, our roots, strengthening our deep community connection, combining that with our ability to get things done, solve tough, complex problems, and our commitment to make those tough decisions that are necessary. We centered Oaklanders and their interests versus non-Oakland interests, authentically engaged all communities across the city, from the hood to the hills, from the east to the west, from our babies to our seniors. We delivered both and solutions instead of either or excuses that further divide and separate us. And our message continues to resonate. We, su we secured the highest number of first place votes out of any candidate in this race, 41,468. We received more contributions from individuals in Oakland than the next three campaigns combined. We have more than 250 consistent campaign volunteers whose commitment to Oakland was so strong, whose belief in our vision was so solid that they sacrificed time with families, times that they could have been on vacation, doing so many other things, even taking off work to make sure that we knocked on the tens of thousands of doors, the tens of thousands of phone calls we made, and the almost 100,000 text messages that were sent. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough to overcome the significant headwinds that we faced. Those included being outspent by my two closest competitors by more than a four to one ratio when you count their IEs. That includes an army of paid canvassers and phone bankers covering more ground than our grassroots Oakland-based volunteers would cover. Having many institutional endorsements already predetermined more than 18 months before the campaign began. Even having negative mailers sent out to voters that use racist imagery by photoshopping me with darker skin color and pointed eyebrows. Yep. <clears throat> so yes, we face some headwinds. And unfortunately with last night's updated ballot count, based on ranked choice voting, we are 682 votes behind, representing 0.5% of the more than 133,000 ballots cast. To my supporters who have been consistent They've been calling me, emailing, and texting me. I felt and feel the same emotions that you feel today. That roller coaster that we've been on the past couple weeks, the anger, the frustration, the distrust of the system that you have expressed, it's something that we've wrestled with in my household as well. And all of these emotions are merely amplified by the close, nature of this race that small margin while it hurts to admit it i do not see a viable path to making up the 682 votes needed to alter the outcome of this election the registrar voters will certify this vote on december 8th and seeing that the bare ballots that are out there, the possibilities of getting a few votes in our direction are not going to tip the scale, I concede that Shangtao will be certified as Oakland's next mayor. Hmm. I reached well, out and talked to Council Member Tao earlier today extended my congratulations assuming that the registrar of voters the anticipated certification stands and i offered her my assistance in the service of open because we cannot allow our city to fail
This small margin of victory or defeat is within the range that does allow for a recount, according to the state election code. This is something that many of my supporters have been calling for, which, and it's something that I know many have questions as to how we will proceed, whether it will be uh, entertained. I will not be leading a recount effort, but I do understand that others are exploring this option. And any registered voter in Oakland can ask for a recount and fund it. As I stood in front of everyone on election night, I declared that Oakland is a city where we value fair, just, open, trustworthy elections and a democratic process. And so if Oakland residents decide to pursue this course of action, we should not object. Also to restore faith and trust in the process, we must address ranked choice voting. In addition to the discrepancy between the popular vote, which I led by 1600 votes and the ranked choice vote, which I lost by about 700, we must acknowledge that 20,000 non-transferable ranked choice ballots, a significant number of people whose voices were not factored into the final decision of who would be Oakland's next mayor. That 15% of those ballots would have counted if we had a regular primary and election, general election. So we have to come to terms with that fact. That is a form of voter suppression. And we have to recognize that and address it. But assuming that everything stands as it does today, we must move forward the same way we began, together. To all of my supporters, including the electorate who voted for me, I hope you are as proud of this campaign as I am. We, we ran this campaign with grit, heart, integrity, all the way through. None of our work has been in vain. We launched, ran, and ended this race with true grassroots momentum, something that only our campaign can say. I am endlessly grateful for the team that we have assembled. I still believe that Oakland's future will be bright because we are not done yet. We will continue. We will continue driving transformational initiatives that deliver the greatest impact to our community. We will continue growing our partnership, our ecosystem to increase the breadth and the depth of our impact and our organizational capacity. Yeah, we're jamming here. <laughs> we, we will also continue holding our leaders accountable, our public institutions accountable to our community's priorities, our standards of excellence, our commitment to serving all of us equitably. As for me, I am still committed to building that new future for Oakland that ensures every Oaklander is able to live, work, learn, and play, and thrive right here in the city that they are from or that they've chosen to make their home. Yeah. Now, I'm looking forward to sharing what's next for me over the next couple weeks and months. For one, I have to say, Erica is not going to let me uh, go by unemployed for too long. So, and, and my kids love to eat. So, so uh, we, we will figure that part out. But however it manifests, know that my commitment to the town and to you, to all Oaklanders, it will never waver. For those incredible campaign volunteers and supporters who are here with me today, I just want to say thank you. I salute you. I lift you up. We are not finished yet.
because we are just getting started, we have built momentum that will last well beyond the end of this campaign. We are going to move forward. What we have started will be realized. I have to thank God for allowing us to get this far. And I know he will continue to support us and shield us and guide us as we move forward. I also have to acknowledge my family. My wife and kids are not here today. They're not able to join us, but I do have my mom and my dad. I want to just acknowledge them. I think as you have seen throughout the campaign, this is truly a family affair. I want to also acknowledge my incredible campaign team. I think we heard from Trishala earlier. Trishala, my campaign manager, much like me, is a is a, is a non-traditional actor in politics and government. But that's something that I know we need. We need more outside thinkers, more folks who are bringing skills, talents from outside to make sure that we apply that inside City Hall and outside of it. I want to acknowledge the rest of the campaign team because we have put in a ton of work. There have been sweat, blood, tears, all kind of effort, and that cannot be understated, undervalued. We have done an amazing job. And so to the campaign team, I look forward to celebrating with you what we have accomplished. To, to my city council staff, Pam, Kiana, Lena, Amelia, and so many uh, others who are not on staff today, but were part of the journey over the past four years, here representing, serving, delivering for District 6. It has been a pleasure to serve with you. I know that we will work together again soon. To my fellow, thank you. To my fellow candidates, all of those who ran for office, I have to just commend everyone who steps up to serve, to put themselves out there for the public scrutiny, for the, for everything that comes with the visibility of being a public servant or aspiring to be one. We sharpened each other on the campaign trail over the past year. We showed that Oakland can come together and that for the most part, we agree and align. And that's what we have to tap into. To the people of Oakland for giving this hometown kid a chance to serve. I'm eternally grateful and I look forward to continuing that effort. And lastly, to the residents of District 6, who we have had the privilege of rolling up sleeves, working with, delivering transformation, really leading, setting up what could be. I want to thank you. I've learned a lot in our partnership. We have accomplished a lot. And I will certainly <coughs> always be focused on making sure that District 6 sees what we deserve, realizes our potential in a way that we have not been able to, but are making progress towards. In closing, as a kid from Oakland, a product of this beautiful town, it has been my honor and privilege to serve as the council member for District 6. It has been my honor and privilege to run this incredible race to become Oakland's next mayor. While it looks as though we have come up short in this endeavor, I hope that my leadership and my example is one that gives young Oaklanders just like me growing up in this town, the hope, the visibility of what they can be, what they can accomplish and what they can do. And some may try to point to this as a failure because we did not win. I would like to frame it differently. We have overcome incredible odds to get as far as we can. As far as we did, as an outsider of the system, we have done immeasurably to move the ball forward.
Throughout this campaign, we maintain our values and our principles. We established a template that will propel us to victory the next time around, whether it be me or someone else who picks up the baton. God has amazing things in store for Oakland. God has amazing things in store for all of its residents. And I look forward to whatever role I will have the opportunity to play as we move forward. Thank you. I guess now, uh, if we have anyone with any questions, I'm happy to answer some questions. Well, Channel 7 turned that off. At a man accused of sexually abusing his son. Yep, Blasquez was granted bail and monitored release, release, release earlier this uh, month. And now he's asking the court for permission to travel to Arizona next weekend to participate okay, in a wrestling event. A judge right, has right. not yet ruled on that request. Uh, a 35-year-old man is in the hospital after being stabbed in what's being called an... And do a discussion. Um, I was looking over my text message because I was told that this was going to be a challenge. So between then and him getting up there... Someone got to Lauren. Maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on the limb and say that I think Shang made him a some type of offer. Knowing how she rolls, uh, that would cause him to make a concession. He didn't just do that. Um, you know, he didn't just do that. Okay. Uh, and that's unfortunate. Uh, for him, because the problem is that in this situation, let me put it this way. Lorna was really passive aggressive. All right. He said, Hey, I support. He said, Hey, look, the, the vote should be challenged, but I won't be leading the charge. But then as the person running for mayor, he is the acknowledged person who would benefit from such a challenge. So why not, right? Uh, that that passive aggression is something that I think in this instance was not needed because what I'm seeing writ large is it's okay to have problems in our voting system if it's within our party, but if there are problems in the American voting system that benefits the other party, then it's an issue, okay? That's what I see. There are clear problems with how this election, as I say, went down. It wasn't just right choice voting, but also it was the consistent daily vote count, counting fresh ballots, right? And then at the end of the day, each ballot count leads to a 59% allocation from Alyssa Victory to Shangtown each and every day. Now, if you're counting fresh ballots, that shouldn't happen. But if they're being pre-allocated, okay, all right? So Lauren, not pointing out that clear problem and not saying, hey, look, we need to straighten this out now, takes the energy out of doing just that. It takes the energy out of doing just that. And then, of course, there's the whole timestamp issue. All right. So and the timestamp issue clearly shows, uh, excuse me, if you haven't seen the the photograph before, but it is up. Uh, it clearly shows that the now former District 4 council member, Shang Tao, 
walked in at 10 minutes, 10 minutes to 5 p.m. on August 12th, 2022. And yet the documents, these documents, the document you see here is the final approval document. It takes 30 minutes to do. So in other words, if you're just walking in at 10 minutes to five, that walk from where she is with Andre to the city clerk's office, that's a three to four minute walk alone. Okay. So you walk in there and then you give your paperwork and you wait and you get it time stamped the way that should have occurred. And this is what Marlene Sachs, the lawyer who's filed the complaint, this is her, her contention and she's right. There's enough evidence to show that Shang was in the office and that the time step should have occurred after five o'clock, which would have rendered her application invalid. But instead they changed the timestamp. They changed the timestamp. Okay. They changed the timestamp. Crystal Sam's changed the timestamp. And then on top of all of that, there's the other question. Why did the Alameda County Registrar voters very quietly change ranked choice voting from three to five with no public announcement? I had to discover it, put it out there. I discovered it because Lauren had said five choices. I said there were three. There were a number. There was confusion. Went back, turned out there were five. But the registrar voters had done no public effort to inform voters, to inform people, nothing. The question is, why? Why? So what we have here is a situation where all of these actions are taken that pervert the system. But because they're allowed and they're not questioned, this perverted system is allowed to continue operating. That's what we have. This is a big mess. And the mess is made bigger by the fact that Lauren is afraid to challenge it. And he's in a, and I think he echoed in the back of his mind why he needs a job. He's unemployed. He put himself in this situation thinking that Oakland Mayor Louis Schaaf's influence and monetary assistance would propel him to victory. This is an iffy bet but I digress. And he quit his district six seat. But he says it was a safe seat, but there are a number of people who believe that if he ran for that seat, he would have lost. But if I were Lauren, I would have put my focus there rather than mayor because he just got there. So as quickly as he came in, He's now out again. And believe me, it's going to sting him. It's going to sting. And he's got a lot of things that he's going to wish he did. The one thing Lauren needs to really work on is not being afraid to chart a course when others are against him. Because it's quite clear that he got a... Um, influenced by some corner could be shang offered him something it could be you know, along those orders along those lines because there was every reason for lauren to want to contest this it takes thirty thousand dollars and if he had announced he wanted to challenge it he had the perfect bully pulpit right then and there to attract donors to do so but he didn't do that. 
he didn't do that. And I have to believe that whoever is dealing with him in his campaign is probably looking at their own paycheck and whether or not they're going to get paid. And they're probably looking at their own expenses saying, hey, look, we only have a month of money to do X. Um, and I know that's got to be a big factor. But it, what they should have done is budgeted some funds for this kind of outcome. All right. That's what they should have done. So this is, if I seem quiet, it's because we're talking about a person in Shanghai who actually had changed, who changed into um, becoming kind of a really aggressive, superbly, super aggressive uh, campaigner who was said by some longtime players to start throwing people under the bus. And for me specifically, I go back to February 2nd when Shang asked me, and I have the text messages here, to not produce them before, to instruct her on how enhanced, enhanced infrastructure financing district legislation works, as well as tax increment financing, in a Zoom meeting, which we had, but she didn't want anyone to know that we met. She wanted to be the mouthpiece. And I'm supposed to give her free information when I said that I'm going to have to go through this, what the staff report did, and I want to be compensated. She said she had someone else to do that. Ironically enough, the same person, Harry Cosmont, that the city had hired whose work is, okay, in my experienced view, having done tax increment financing revenue projections for 37 years. So, and then, and then after that, she proceeded to refuse my interview request. So I've never, and I will not, ask her for an interview. I will continue to be a, I'm going to be a commentator, perhaps at a, let me take the perhaps out of my statement, at a greater rate than I normally would because of her nature. Now, if she wants to change that state of affairs, she has my number. She's already texted me through her robo text eight times asking for money. That was her, Brandon Harami, her aide who got uh, who got her into some trouble by his behavior, top of that, which leads me to the Leanna Powell situation and the fact that the Oakland Public Ethics Commission has an open investigation, which a lot of people, maybe some of you out there who are with the media, misreported. It is an active, open investigation. It's not pending. It has nothing to do with the departure of the executive director. It is an open active investigation. Again, it is an open, active investigation. This is the ugliest situation I have ever seen in all of my decades in Oakland. And for people who are in what they like to think the media is to allow this to go on with this sad tableau, is exemplary of how low the media has sunk. We have nonprofit organizations, media organizations that act in complete disregard for nonprofit law by getting involved in this election. We have black people out here who know that a black media is needed, but allow a white media to tell their story, which is completely nuts. We have a black media organization, the Oakland Post, that should be taking a more aggressive position, but isn't because it likes to, well, gain money from both sides. Hey, more power to Paul McCall. Okay, that's, 
because it's difficult to run a media organization because of the nature of today's media economics. It is a tech play today. You can't do media the way that he wants to do it. You have to do it more the way that I'm doing it. Lower cost. All right? So, so hey, look, Paul's always looking for a way to pay for his means of production. I get that. But just tell people where you're coming from. Um, because I say that because in the case of the Oakland Bulk and Oversized Terminal, Paul's organization enjoyed monies from Inside Terminal Solutions, and they also enjoyed monies from those on the no coal side, both sides. Okay. And they would produce content representing one side or the other. Sometimes within this like two week period. I'm not kidding you. All right. I'm not kidding you. This is why. I thought it was hilarious that Stephen Tavares did this piece for the East Bay Express and mentioning me. You know, they were all the, the the white people who like to call themselves journalists were really chomping a bit about me, but they were not looking at the Oakland Post. And there's a reason for that, because in their eyes, subconsciously, this is something I'm not even aware of, the Oakland Post represents black media. It's like black subjects. So they don't think to look at that because, hey, the Oakland Post is not stepping on their turf, which they're white turf. But me, I'm all over that. All over it. And so if you take an unvarnished look at it, I'm attacked for going into what is considered a white area. And it's an attack I've endured for decades. Okay. Okay. Decades. Still standing. So point is that, back to my major message, this is a big, gigantic mess. It is a huge, enormous mess. It points to the possibility that Lauren did a deal to not call for directly and aggressively call for voting a challenge to the vote. It points to a number of people out there who are looking for a leader. All right. Now, if Lauren would say, well, I didn't want to divide the city, excuse me, the city's already divided. The city was divided the moment the the city was divided in a lot of ways. Okay. This is not going to bring the city together because the way we do media now allows us to see where the problems are. Now, because the mainstream media has no investigative reporting budget, you're not going to get a focus from them. So I say to you all out there, hey, look. Invest in Zenny 62 Media. All right. But whether or not you do so, I'm still going to look at that problem. Because Oakland is a Oakland is in trouble. You know the city looks bad. You know that. We have gigantic investments that have not been done. You know that we are at, and probably will at this point lose the A's just because of the mess that this political system is in to Las Vegas, more than likely. That's been the path. We know that people leaving the Bay Area in droves because of the cost. We have an enormous homeless population that's crying for help. Here's where I will give Shang credit. She's concerned about solving that problem. Okay. She's concerned about solving that problem. 
But Shang has to go out and mend fences with people who she has ran over. She has to mend fences with Leanna Powell, who is unemployed, who faced mental anguish and trauma over how she was treated by Shang and the people in her office, who filed a complaint with the Oakland Public Ethics Commission that turned into an investigation that is active. It is an active investigation. Okay. We have appearances of voting in propriety with the Alameda County Registrar of Voters. So Lauren came to a fork in the road. Lauren could have either turned one way and said, we need to address this and I'm challenging it or do what he did. He turned the other way, sort of. He basically said, I support it, but I don't want to be the face of it. Uh, wow. Talk about a bang and a whimper. I support it, but I don't want to be the face of it. I support it, but I don't want to be the face of it. Okay. I support it, but I don't want to be the face of it. Wow. Let that roll around your brain a few times, like maybe four. <laughs> Every, any resident can file a complaint. Any resident can challenge the outcome. Right, but what they want, what the people of Oakland want to hear is the person who's directly, who's the most directly affected by it, who was made unemployed by it, go out there and challenge the outcome, okay? That's the way that works. But Lauren's famous passive aggression came to the fore. You can sometimes think a little too much. And sometimes you have to turn that off. And sometimes you have to go primal, your primal instincts, and just let them rip. And he should have done that. He should have went Bullworth. If you've never seen the movie of Warren Beatty, you got to see it. He just let it rip. That would have gained more support and momentum for a challenge. And I believe that challenge effectively pushed would really get the city to the place it needs to be because it would have forced the problem be straightened out. But now Lauren's in a sense prolonged it. Okay. He's prolonged it by not being the leader to say, you know what? We need to straighten this stuff out right now. I'm challenging this vote. I don't like how this turned out. I don't like any of the news that I'm getting from this. So boom, I'm leading the charge. He could have made that, he could have made that his job. Say, hey, donate to my campaign here. I'm doing X. Because he's not council member anymore. Or District Six. That's Mr. Jenkins. And, and Lauren has spent his time wrapping up. So he left himself without a path, okay, without a clear one. And who knows how it would have turned out. All that was needed was for a recount to turn up a different number to just turn off that and have the whole process done again. But it's not a good look for Oakland. Now I'm going to close on that note at about 10 minutes to the hour. It is not a good look for Oakland, and it points to a very scary future. Subscribe to Zenny62 and bookmark oaklandnewsnowblog.com.
that ends this broadcast.